welcome to At Home. It's always nice to have you with us, particularly when maybe at this time of the year you've been vacationing and you've missed us for a couple of weeks. Well, we want you to know that we missed you. We knew you weren't there. Not really, but I'm sure that this time of the year with vacations and finally the families all together to take that long-waited vacation, you deserve it. We missed you, but we're glad you're back. Today we're going to be preparing uh, an entire menu for you, something that you can have for a, a quick dinner for your family and get it on the table quickly. No long and uh, very hard, difficult, lengthy uh, instructions for these recipes. These are all very easy. Well, before we get started, though, I want to share uh, a letter or two with you. This one says, Dear Arlene, I really enjoy your show whenever I get the chance to see it. You encouraged me on your show last week which is really several months ago now, uh, to get back to church and to make it a weekly habit. I had been away from church for about a year after some very rough personal events had occurred in my life. I felt the need to get back to worship, but just never did. I attended services this Easter Sunday along with my husband, and I felt wonderful. I really enjoyed the fellowship and getting back to church. It was a void in my life that needed to be filled. Thank you for your wonderful program. Keep encouraging people. I just needed that boost to get going. And she signs her name, Corinne. I appreciate that. That tells me that you're hearing what I'm saying and not only watching what I'm doing, but you're hearing when I ask you and, and kind of advise you just to get back into church and fellowship because it really is important. And this lady, um, and really a man, they're from New Hope, Pennsylvania, says, I just found your show on my TV and I love it. Last week I remembered the cabbage and the rice and the lasagna dish and made it with great success, but I can't remember exactly the beef dish, so I'd very much appreciate the recipe for that one. She says, um, she watched the one about the pies and these are her husband's all-time favorites, but to treat him, I've always bought them because I was afraid to try. I do bake and cook a lot because I need dinners for AIDS for Friends, and it's an organization for helping shut-ins. She says, we serve 1,200 people a week, seven days a week. It's all volunteer work, and we are dedicated to feeding our friends. Please keep your show going. I love you all. This is, God bless, Gladys. We appreciate, this is a lady who has taken valuable time in her life and offered it as a volunteer to help someone that's not as fortunate as she, or maybe you or me. Where would the world be without volunteers who care about other people? We'd all be in a mess. I know right here at Cornerstone Television, our volunteer staff is very, very, very important to us. We couldn't do what we do. I have a lady that helps me with my correspondence. She and I talk about uh, what we want to say when you write to us and you have specific questions. She does all the typing. She's a very special lady to me, and that's just one volunteer. We have other people come in and help us at different times when there's something uh, special, uh, uh, candy and cookies and things we're making that are involved, and we need extra hands to help to make everything go smoothly. We appreciate volunteers, and I appreciate Gladys. And I want to personally thank you, Gladys, for what you do to help feed 1,200 people a week. God bless you. We appreciate that. And we appreciate you. If you've got some extra time, we want you to think about volunteering for an organization that could use your hands, maybe your feet, or maybe just all of you. We'll be right back in just a minute to begin today's program. Stay tuned. Here's a special hint just for you. today's at-home hint. A jar of marmalade is perfect in recipes that require orange peel and makes a delicious glaze for pork chops or chicken. For updates, pictures, stories, and more, like us on Facebook. To watch hundreds of classic episodes, subscribe to us on YouTube. And to get hundreds of free recipes, visit ctvn.org slash at home. Well, we're back in the kitchen and we're going to make something called meat cakes today. And you can stuff these or make them plain. We're just going to start out with some ground round. And I've already minced a clove of garlic because that's a good flavor to get going with ground round all the time and any time. I'm going to add a couple of beaten eggs. 
Now you said, Arlene, this is very similar to uh, a meatloaf, and yet yeah, it is, it really is, except that we like to put cracker crumb and things like that in with meatloaf. I don't do that with this. I use instead just some cubed bread and just let it air dry out a little bit. And honest, there's just, this is about three slices, but I probably won't use all that. Probably two slices would be enough. We're gonna add, now I have some green onions, and I'm gonna add those to the mix. Honest, this is one of those recipes, you kinda do your own thing. You can add whatever you like to flavor the meat. That's what you need to do. We're gonna add some peppers, some finely chopped peppers. And we're gonna mix. Except maybe I'm gonna do the Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, there we go. We're gonna put about maybe a tablespoon of that. They always correct me and I always get it wrong. You know, I mean, I keep working on it. And a good healthy squirt of ketchup. All right, let me see if I have everything. We need a little salt, not too much. Okay, and some fresh ground black pepper. This makes a good flavor. Now we have our skillet going. We have a little bit of oil. You don't want to put too much oil in the skillet because you won't need to. This is ground round and this is nice and lean, but you need a little of that to flavor it. So just be, um, don't put too much in, in the uh, skillet because you don't need it. This will cook out. And we're just gonna mix this very quickly. They're laughing because it's making squishing sounds, but it always does because it has to. Now I make this sometimes, if we're doing a cookout, I'll make the regular ground meat, take the regular ground round and flavor it and season it. And then I will saute some onions and, and mushrooms and peppers together and a little bit of butter or something. Or you can just take a handful and do it raw, any way you want to. That's the versatility of this recipe. You, there's no set absolutes. It's what you enjoy, what you like. You need the egg though, that has to hold it together. Because I tell you, it's a binding agent. What you put it in, it will hold it together. So you need that because if you're gonna stuff them, then you're always gonna have to have something that's gonna hold them together. And what you do really is take a, a nice flat hamburger like that patty, and you just sprinkle some, put you some mushrooms in there and then you put some on top. And you keep working with this until you have this patty, you have the mushrooms hidden, and you can make this fun with the kids because then you say to the kids, oh, there's a surprise in that meat cake for you and I bet you don't know what it is. And of course they don't, and it will encourage them maybe to eat. I'm gonna put this on and just let them brown in the skillet. Go ahead and get that going so it's nice and warm. You can just, you can make them like this and put them in a muffin tins and bake them in the oven. That's another easy way. You can make it just a plain patty like this and, and go ahead and, and uh, cook it any way you want to because then you could make a gravy for on your potatoes. Or if you're not having that kind of potato, you could just brown up some, some additional peppers and onions and just put them over the top of it. And this is one of those versatile things. I keep saying that word because that's really what it is. Some are full of mushrooms, some aren't. Some are just have the, the mix that we have created here, the flavor, and it's, you're gonna like it any way you do it. Um, other things you could add is chunks of cheese. You could put that in the middle. You could put, um, make some bread stuffing. Instead of using the cubes of bread, go ahead and make the stuffing like you do for a, a chicken if you're gonna stuff a chicken. Make some of that, and again, make your patty flat. Put your stuffing in the middle of it. Roll the patty up around the stuffing. You'd wanna make it with the butter, though, so it would season it very well. And let's put another, uh, now let's put some of these in here. And some more mushrooms. And then you have to be sure to roll the patty up. I always put a little bit of additional meat over the top of it to get it started. And then just kind of form it around until it's completely covered. There's your meat cake. I'll tell you, your family's gonna enjoy this because you can put these on the grill if you wanna do an outdoor thing. You can make them like that. Or you can broil them indoors in the oven. I kinda like to do them in a skillet though because depending on the additional accompanying vegetables that I have with it, like if I do mashed potatoes, there's wonderful flavor with all the vegetables that you have 
in this, like the peppers, the onions, uh, the parsley. When you have all of that in there, that gives wonderful drippings to make a, a very thin gravy for your mashed potatoes or, or whatever. So this is one of those that you can make to your specification. You can see they're browning beautifully and you're gonna be careful that you're gonna to want to keep turning these so that they brown evenly. And uh, I like chives in this. You could put some fresh dill in this mixture. You could use uh, basil if you really like basil. You could do this and pour some, some tomato sauce over the top of it. A lot of different ways. You could do that, put the tomato sauce over it when they're, when they're completely and fully cooked. Add a piece of mozzarella cheese on top of that. You could have a pizza burger. Just a variety of ways and they're all good and good for you. Now we're gonna make sure that these are browning and you wanna be watching them because they should be getting brown just like that. You have to keep a careful eye. Really need a little spatula for this because they're, there we go. Let me get my spatula here. You want to, uh, I, I tend to like to have beef cooked well, but a lot of people don't. So these you can cook according to your own specifications. That's important to do. Some people just don't like it well done. Some people don't like it when they cut into them and they're rare, that doesn't turn them on. Well, if it doesn't, then just make sure that they're cooked to the person's specifications. We like to do these on a picnic because this is a, an easier way to fancy up a plain old hamburger. And the flavor, you can control the flavor totally by the way you prepare. So we're gonna let those cook for a little while until they get done. And I'm gonna put the lid on so that they start to cook through now that they've browned, all right? The next thing we're gonna do while these are still cooking is we're gonna make uh, cheese biscuits. Now I'm gonna ask you, have you ever been to the Red Lobster? I mean, that's a chain of restaurants that we have here in Pittsburgh. I know they're about all over the country. Do you ever eat those little cheese biscuits that they serve? Oh, I found this recipe when I was looking through a magazine. It's so easy, I, had to, I just have to share it with you. You wouldn't believe what they're made out of. It's not complicated, it's Bisquick. So you take two cups of Bisquick and two thirds of a cup of milk and a half a cup of cheddar cheese. It's too easy, isn't it? It's just too easy. Now what you're gonna do with that is stir it. We're gonna stir it up. And the secret to this is after you stir it up, then you have to beat it vigorously for 30 seconds because I think that that's what makes it really good because when you, when you beat it up and you stir it vigorously for 30 seconds, it must add air to it or something, but apparently, I'm having a little problem stirring this with this spoon. Let me get this off. What you do with these, after you have beat the dough up real well, then you drop them by tablespoons onto an ungreased cookie sheet and you bake them at a very hot oven which is about 450 degrees and you want to make sure that oven's good and hot before you start these. All right? And you bake them for eight to ten minutes and that's all. Once they're done, bring them out, take a half a cup of melted butter with garlic powder in there and you just brush them over the top that's the cheese biscuits that you enjoy at the Red Lobster. Can you believe that? This makes about a dozen. Just spoon them out, just like this. And I'll tell you, those are one of the things I enjoy most when I go to the Red Lobster is those biscuits. Don't eat them very often because I have a note on what the nutritional value is and this may uh, make you change your mind about making them very often because they do have quite a bit of calories and quite a bit of grams of fat. I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven. We'll be back right after this really important message. If you love At Home with Arlene Williams, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of episodes with all your favorite recipes, holidays, and friends. Say hi to your fan club. Hi, fan club.
and don't forget to click the bell so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Well, we've just put our biscuits in the oven and now I'm taking a check on the meat cakes. Look at that. I want you to know too that when those brown drippings uh, keep browning in the bottom, it's gonna make a wonderful base for some gravy for some mashed potatoes or just over the meat cakes as you uh, begin to prepare them that for the final, for your, your uh, completed meal. We have some potatoes that we have been taking care of here. They've been boiling during the, during the whole program. And what I want to do is make sure that they're good and soft because I'm going to show you how to mash potatoes. I know that that's something that a lot of you have written to me. The first time we did that, you were su surprised and shocked at how you actually make mashed potatoes. But if you make them this way, the letters that I've read from you say, you know, when I make them like that, I used to wonder why in the world do I get these big lumps? Why do I get these big lumps? But if you make them like this, I'm gonna promise you, you will not get big lumps because this, there's, a, there's a procedure that you have to do. And if you'll follow that, it will not be lumpy. All right, we've, our potatoes are nice and soft. That's the first thing. Don't try to mash a potato that's hard. You have to be able to push, well, here we go. You have to be able to push the mixing blades, mixer blades down into this. Okay, we got a problem here. Let's see here. Now we're all right. First thing you wanna do is add a piece of butter. Then you're gonna add some salt and you don't want to get carried away with the salt, so just do it sparingly, because remember, there's people who can't eat as much salt, maybe, as what you like to do. And I'm gonna start now. Don't add the milk, don't add anything until you have all of the lumps out of this, these potatoes at this point. If you mash them with adding milk, or adding sour cream, or adding anything else, you're in trouble. I mean it, you are in trouble at this point. You can't do it, those potatoes will never, the lumps will not come out. You are mashing them and then you're gonna whip them. If you try to whip them before you've mashed them, you've got a major problem, you can't do it. So con you're just gonna go around them, make sure all the lumps are out. Be careful. Looks pretty smooth. Okay? You can usually tell because the beaters will hang up on the lumps. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna use some sour cream. You could use heated milk, but we're gonna use some sour cream in this. And I'm gonna put some fresh parsley. Not too much in there. And if you wanted to put pepper, this would be a good time to do pepper. But now we're gonna whip them. This is whipping. See how creamy they get? They'll get creamy when you whip them, when you mash them, you take the lumps out and then you whip them when you put the milk and your other seasonings in. What you want to do too is be sure that you scrape around the edge of that bowl to get all the other little goodies. There we go. Okay. These are about there. And you're going to want to keep these hot until you're ready to serve. Put them back on the stove where it's kind of warm and where they're going to stay hot without even having to to uh, heat them up in the microwave again. All right, now we're gonna make a, gonna make a dressing for our romaine lettuce salad. It's a wonderful dressing. It's a sweet and sour hot dressing that my mother-in-law always made. She could do this dressing better than anybody I know. Just take some pieces of bacon and you're gonna let these cook in a heated skillet because they're gonna render their fat. Okay, they're rendering the fat out of this and that's gonna be the basis for your dressing. And the, the ingredients in this is to let your bacon get cooking and nice and brown. You're gonna add some vinegar to it to make it sour and then add some sugar to it to make it sweet. And I have my bowl of greens here that I'm, and I would suggest that really start using other varieties of lettuce besides iceberg. There is other varieties. And this romaine is absolutely wonderful. More vitamins in it, more nutrients in it than iceberg lettuce. And we're also gonna use a 
a red onion. And I kind of put the rings in because there are some people that don't like onion. You can break up some pieces, but put them in rings so that if people don't prefer not to eat it, well, they don't have to. I'll tell you, there's nothing better than a good fresh onion, though. When Vidalias are in season, that's the onion for me. I like Vidalias. And you can put some small pieces in just to flavor the whole dressing if you'd like to. All right, this, the bacon's really cranking here. And when it gets nice and brown, has to get brown, then we're gonna add our vinegar to it. What I would serve as an accompaniment with this, I would steam some broccoli, have our mashed potatoes, have a good salad. And I would even take our meat cakes, which are just about done. They're not too far from being done. You can see the wonderful juices at the bottom of this pan. You could put some, just some flour in there and let it soak up the flour and kind of make a, what they call a roux, which is a, a grease and a flour together and then pour some either beef broth or just plain water because this flavor is so good, it will make a wonderful, wonderful gravy for your meat cakes. All right, now we're gonna add, let's add some of our, this again is according to what you like. Stand back when you do this because the vapors and the fumes that come off of vinegar will take your breath away. So just stand back depending on how much you need to make, and then you're accordingly gonna add the sufficient amount of sugar. Well, while I'm doing this, and this is gonna dissolve, then we're just gonna pour it over top of our lettuce. I want you to listen to this important message on how you can get today's recipes. We'll be right back. To get all the recipes from today's show, plus hundreds of others, just click the link in the video description or visit our website, ctvn.org slash at home. Well, we're here at the table with all of the good things, I hope you're gonna think they're good when you try them, that we've prepared for you today. There's our meat cakes there. We've just made the thin gravy, like I mentioned to you, and put them on the platter, decorated with a little bit of tomato and some parsley. Next to it are the mashed potatoes, the smooth, creamy mashed potatoes with parsley on top. Then coming back is our salad with the wilted, wilted salad. See how that dressing, it just wilts down the romaine. And I'll tell you, that's gonna be something that your family's gonna enjoy. Next to it, we've steamed some broccoli, like I suggested, because it makes a nice color combination with the brown of the meat and the potatoes and that, the uh, salad. And here are the biscuits. Don't these look like the Red Lobster biscuits? Of course, you have to cover them when they come out. As soon as they come out, and they're best to be eaten hot, you have to cover them with some melted butter that you've put some garlic powder in. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna try it. Believe it or not, this tastes like we're sitting at the Red Lobster. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy it. We always enjoy coming into your home and we hope we've been a blessing to you. Don't forget to see us the next time. Be sure to join us because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. See you then. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Fresh produce provided by Jordan Banana, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Dravosburg, PA. Cookware provided by Woolies. Your favorite gourmet deserves the best for less from Woolly Balcony Cookware. Groceries provided by Foodland, where the answer is always yes. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.